This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on chapters 2.1 through 2.4 from the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today we're talking about scalars and vectors, vector operations, vector addition of forces, and the addition of a system of coplanar forces. The objectives are to show how to add forces and resolve them into components and to express force and position on Cartesian vector form and explain how to determine the vector's magnitude and direction. So first we'll go over some application of adding forces. We'll resolve a vector using Cartesian vector notation. We'll talk about using that notation to do addition and then we'll do some sample problems. Now there are three concurrent forces acting on this hook right here. You have F3, F2, and F1, and they're directed along the lines of actions of these chains. Uh, we want to decide if the hook will fail or not given these loads. So to do this, we'll need to know the resultant vector seen here in red, which is the sum of the vectors F1, F2, and F3. Now a scalar is any positive or negative quantity that can be completely specified by its magnitude. So examples of scalar quantities include length, mass, volume. Now scalars are a physical quantity. They have a magnitude, but they also have units. So you can kind of treat them like a number with units. Now vectors, on the other hand, are a physical quantity that requires both a magnitude and a direction. Examples of vectors encountered in statics are forces, positions, and moments. Uh, a vector is shown graphically by drawing an arrow. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector and the angle theta between that and some fixed reference source, uh, some fixed reference axis rather, uh, denotes a direction of the vector. So in print, vectors are represented by boldface letters. You can see here, um, he also uses red and italics. But when I do it um, handwritten, I just put, like if it's a velocity vector, I'll put a line on top of it. That means that's a vector quantity. <clears throat> so you can multiply and divide uh, vectors by a scalar. And um, if a vector is multiplied by a positive scalar, as you see here, uh, the magnitude just increases by that scalar. So if the scalar is 2, 2 times a is just 2a, and so it's a vector that has a length of 2a. Uh, multiplying by a negative scalar will give a negative uh, direction. It actually changes the direction of the vector, and uh, you can see in graphical examples here. Now vector addition, this is the graphical way to, env to, to envision what we're doing when we're adding vectors. Uh, it's good to know where the, um, the graphical method comes from. So basically we have two ways. We have the parallelogram law and the tri triangle method. So it is necessary to resolve the forces into components in order to study uh, the effects of those forces. So in the parallelogram law, you take, I want to add these two vectors together, A and B. So basically what you do is you join them at their tails, as you see here, and then from the tip of B, you draw a line parallel to A, and from the tip of A, you draw a line parallel to B. And the resultant vector then is the vector between the intersection point and the original point, as you see here. The other way to do it is a triangle method. Uh, just remember, tip to tail. So I want to add these two vectors again. Now I draw the A vector, and then tip to tail, I put the tip of the B vector, the tail of the B vector at the head of the, or the tip of the A vector, and you see that here, here. And the resultant is just that right there. So now you, these are triangles, and you can actually use law of sines to, to, to solve these problems. 
I don't recommend doing that because uh, it only works for two vectors in two dimensions. I mean, anytime you have more than two vectors and if you're in three dimensions, you may as well use Cartesian uh, form, uh, which we're going to go over shortly. But it's, it's useful to know where the graphical solutions for these uh, additions of, of vectors comes from. Now, sometimes we need to resolve the vector into some components in order to study if it's pulling or pushing or what it's doing. Uh, for example, here we have this force F, and we want to know well, what are the components of that force F along the U direction and the V direction. So basically what that means is we're using kind of like the parallelogram law in reverse. What I want to do is I want to say what are the values of fu and fv, these two vectors, and that will give me the resultant vector f. And here you can see this. This is the parallelogram way of showing it. I drew a line parallel to fu there and a line parallel to fv there to get the resultant force. And this is just doing it in backwards, in other, in other words, doing the uh, parallelogram law or tip to tail law backwards. And here you see the tip to tail, fu plus fv tip to tail is equal to the final force f. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like to talk about the addition of a system of coplanar forces. And in particular, I'm going to introduce Cartesian vector notation. So it's possible to represent the x and y components of a force in terms of these Cartesian unit vectors i and j. Uh, they're called unit vectors because they have a dimensionless, dimensionless magnitude of 1. And so they are used to indicate the directions of the x and y axes. So i is the unit vector of one length and in the i direction, and j is the unit vector of one length in the y direction. So the way we do this is we say that, let's say that we know this angle right here, theta. Well, we know that uh, f is equal to f sub x in the i direction, right? Plus f sub y in the j direction. Well, we can look at this triangle right here and realize that f sub x is just the hypotenuse f times the cosine of theta. Now these are scalars. So the component of the force f in the x direction is f times cosine of 30, and that's in the i direction. So now this becomes a vector. These are also vectors. No, these are not vectors, sorry. Those are scalars. And the um, component in the y direction, likewise, is f times the sine of 30 in the j direction. So you can see we just broke up the, the vector f using, you know, the triangle rules of uh, cosine theta and sine theta. So now we can take a vector, any vector, it could be a three-dimensional vector as well. We're working in 2D here, but we also will be working in 3D. We can break it up into its x, y, and uh, z components, it turns out, but we'll do that later on in the course. So here's the one that I just did earlier. But it's important to note, again, the x and y axes are always perpendicular to each other. But we can put that in any inclination we want. Like, for instance, here we see the x-axis is this way, the y-axis is this way, and we have a force f here now, which is now in the fourth quadrant. So we want to resolve that uh, force into its components. If we know the angle here, like theta again, um, that f prime force is just f prime sub x, this component in the i direction, and we know that is f times cosine of 30. Sorry about that. And likewise, we have minus Fy because its component is in the negative y direction. Positive y is in this direction. So F sub y is negative in that case. Now, we need to uh, add several vectors together. Uh, to do this with the parallelogram law would be difficult because you have to do 
vectors f1 and f2 first, find its resultant, and then draw another parallelogram and take the resultant vector between f1 and f2 and add it to f3, and it gets really, really complicated. So always the best way to do these is to break them up into their uh, x and y components, their Cartesian components. So the way we do this is resolve each force into its components, and that means the components in the x direction and the y. So we did that for each of the forces. And then all we have to do then is add all the x components together. They're all in the same direction, right? So we can just scalarly add the x components of all these vectors, these three, and, and that'll be the resultant in the, uh, that'll be the component in the i direction. And likewise, we just add all the y components together to get the component of the resultant vector in the y direction. And then if we want to, we can find the magnitude and angle of the resultant vector. So here's an example of the process. Uh, we know that the resultant vector is going to be the sum of f1 plus f2 plus f3. So the way we do it is we break up f1 into its i and j components. And remember now, we're mostly going to, we're going to know these angles here, so it is going to be possible to find out uh, what the components are using the cosine and sine of theta. Now F2, notice that F2 in the x direction is negative, right, because its component is down here. And F2 in the y direction is positive, you know, it's right here. And then F3 is in the third, fourth quadrant rather, so it has a positive I component and a negative Y component. And then we just collect all the I terms. So we say F1X plus minus F2X plus F3X in the I. Uh, then add all the J components. So we have F1 in the J plus F2 in the J minus F3 in the J. And then we just do those sums and we get the answer. And then it might be, you might be asked, what is the magnitude of the vector? And so the magnitude of, if you know FRX and FRX sub Y, the magnitude of the resultant vector is just square root of the sum of the squares. That's from Pythagorean theorem, right? And likewise, the tangent of theta is the Y component here over the X component here. So we have this formula here. So whenever you have a vector in Cartesian notation, you should be able to give me its magnitude and its direction as well. So let's do an example. Uh, there are three concurrent forces acting on this tent post. Uh, we have F1, 300 newtons, and it's all in the y direction. We have F2, 450 newtons. It's at 45 degrees in the second quadrant. See, I already have a coordinate system labeled here for me. And F3 is in the first quadrant, and it is 600 newtons, and it's in a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the way we do this is resolve each of the forces into the X and Y components, add the respective components, like add all the I components to the, and add all the J components, and then if need be, find the magnitude and angle from that. So let's do this one. So first let's resolve the vectors into their x, y, or i, j components. So first let's do f1. Now f1 is all in the y direction, so f1, its Cartesian vector is 0i plus 300j. That's in newtons. Now f2, now it's in the second quadrant. So its x component is going to be negative. So I would write um, 450 times a minus sine cosine of 45. And its y component, that's in the i direction, its y component is, is positive. So it would be plus sine of 45 in the j direction. This is a 450. And then f3. It's in the first quadrant, so both of its components are positive. So it's 600 times uh, 3 fifths in the I plus 4 fifths in the J. 
we can simplify uh, F2. It is uh, 450 times minus cosine of 45 is minus 318.2 in the I. And likewise, uh, 318.2 in the J. And so, and then F3, I'm just doing the multiplications here. 600 times 3 fifths is 360 in the I. 4 fifths times 600, 480 in the J. So now all I have to do is add all the I components and all the J components to find out my answer. So the resultant vector is uh, we're collecting all the I components from the previous slides. We have 0 minus 318.2 plus 360 in the I. And all the J components, they were 300 plus 318.2 plus 480. And that's in the J. And that's in Newtons. So you just have to do the additions and subtractions here, and you get FR is equal to 41.8 in the I plus 1098 J Newtons. And if you want the magnitude of FR, uh, FR is going to be. Now, notice I didn't put a line above this, so that means it's a scalar. So the magnitude of that far is square root of 41.8 squared plus 1098 squared. And that's 1099. And the angle phi is equal to the inverse tangent of the y component, 1098. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Divided by the x component, 41.8. So phi is 87.8 degrees. Let's do another example. Now we have a force of 30 pounds. Uh, it's acting on this pipe. Here's the force right there. It's acting on this pipe. We want to resolve the components, that, that force, into its components along the U and the V directions. So the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to say that we, what we're being asked to do here is actually there's a vector in the u direction and there's a vector in the v direction, right? And I want to say that the sum of those two vectors is equal to the resultant vector of 30 pounds at 30 degrees. So I'm going to actually resolve these not to uv components but into uh, x and y Cartesian components. So you can see the vectors that I'm trying to solve for f sub v, you know, it's drawn parallel to the v axis, and f sub u is drawn parallel to the u axis. And then I'm going to establish a coordinate system, x and y. And then now I'm just going to break those three vectors, the 30 pound, the f u, and the f y, into Cartesian components. So first, let's do f sub v. Uh, F sub V is at an angle, if this is 15 degrees, right, this angle right here is 75. So F sub V as a vector is equal to its magnitude times cosine of 75 in the I plus sine of 75 in the J. It's in the first quadrant. So both components are positive. Now uh, I have this vector fu, and I want to break it into its x and y components, but it's just all of it's in the u direction. So you write that as f sub u is equal to the magnitude of f sub u uh, in the i direction. Now since we know that the resultant force f is equal to Fu plus Fv. Let's also resolve F into its Cartesian. So the force F is 30 pounds, and it's at 30 degrees in the first quadrant, so it's cosine of 30 in the I plus sine 30 in the J. So using this equation right here, I can just uh, write out a very long equation and solve for Fu and Fv. So what that looks like is F is 
30. I don't know why it does that. Uh, F is uh, 30 times cosine of 30 in the I plus sine 30 in the J. That's equal to Fu, which is Fu in the I, plus F sub V times uh, cosine of 75 in the I plus sine 75 in the J. So we do the, all those, uh, uh, we you know, multiply this out, collect the I components and solve for F sub U. And F sub U comes out to be, uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, 21.9 pounds and F sub V is equal to 15.5 pounds. And the way I got that was I just collected the I terms. I said 30 cosine of 30I is equal to Fu plus Fv cosine of 75. Then I said also another equation is 30 times sine of 30 in the J is equal to F sub V sine of 75. Okay, let's do one last problem. This will be similar to the example we did earlier. But now we have three forces, uh, F1, 850 in the, second, in the fourth quadrant on a 345 triangle, F2, 625 newtons in the third quadrant at an angle of 60 degrees from the x-axis, and F3 is 750 newtons at an angle of 45 degrees from the negative x-axis. So the way we do this is we will resolve each of these forces into its Cartesian components, that is their x and y. Then we'll add all the i components and all the j's and let's get our answer. So it turns out, let's see, F1. So F1 is in the fourth quadrant, so the y component is negative, x component is positive. So F1 is equal to 850. Uh, times four-fifths in the I minus three-fifths in the J. Now F2 it's in the third quadrant so both components are negative 625 times cosine of 60 minus cosine of 60 in the I minus sine 30 in the J. Uh, sine 60 sorry in the J. And F3, it's in the second quadrant, so its x component is negative, and its magnitude is 750 uh, times cosine of 45, the i, and that's negative, uh, plus sine of 45 in the j. So this comes out to be uh, 680 i minus 510 j. This comes out to be minus 312.5i minus 541.3j. And this one comes out to be minus 530.3 in the i uh, plus 530.3j. Now to get the resultant force F, um, we just add the x component, so we add 680, subtract 312.5, subtract 530.3, and we get uh, F is minus 162.8 in the I. Now we just add all the J components, so we have minus 510, minus 541.3, plus 530.3, and you get uh, minus 520.9 J. And we need to put the units, it's Newtons. So that's the resultant force. And if you want the magnitude of that resultant force, um, you know, it'll be uh, uh, magnitude of the resultant force is the square root of the component squared. So it's, you know, minus 162.8 squared plus minus 520.9 squared. 
the resultant force is 546 newtons. And the angle, so phi, would be inverse tangent of the y component, 520.9, over x component, 162.8. So phi is about 72.6 degrees. If you want to get what theta is, you need to add 180 to that, plus 72.6. So our theta is uh, 252.6. Degrees. This concludes chapter 2.1 through 2.4. Next up is chapters 2.5 through 2.6, Cartesian Vectors. See you in cyberspace.